Hello, BookTube. As you know, some of you, if you watch these videos and listen to me kvetch endlessly, you know that I am uh, currently in the very happy midst of uh, figuring out my ebook reading future. Since print galleys, obviously, as you know, if you're not seeing, you're not seeing the, the mail halls here on this channel that you used to see, uh, I'm in the middle of figuring out what my future with ebooks is going to be. I'm, I'm clearly going to be doing a lot more reading of ebooks now than I ever did before. So I ordered a Kindle Paperwhite with e-ink because I was told by a number of you, a great number of you, that it's a very much easier experience on the eyes for reading than reading on an iPad or a tablet of any kind. And I also went to my tech drawer and I hauled out all of my stuff. I hauled out uh, I, I fired up, I looked at, again, in detail at all the uh, reading apps on my iPad. I looked at all the reading apps on my previous iPad, uh, which are some of the only things that will still work on that machine. It's so old. Uh, and I found uh, a bunch of other e-readers, uh, tablets that I've had over the years, and uh, powered them all up and have been looking into them, just seeing, taking, really taking stock of what my e-book library is like. Uh, and at one point I was looking at uh, the, the deep in the bowels of an old nook of mine and realized something horrifying, which is that when I, I always say my old friend Deb is the human version of me because she'll buy books willy-nilly and then not remember, or she'll read books and not remember that she's read them, or she'll... Her filing system is much more akin to the, the messy randomness of a normal person than, than, than mine tends to be. And I was looking at this old nook and I was realizing, oh my god, OMG, I've bought a lot of ebooks in my time. I have a lot more than I remembered that I did. There might I might be closer to Deb than I thought. Uh, and when I was looking at all of these things and poking around in them, I realized that I could make a list. Easily, I could do more than one list of books that I found on an old nook uh, that I can that I don't think I've ever talked about with you and that I can recommend. Uh, so I thought I would do that. I have a list of a few books here that I'm going to jot down, and I remember I will leave the list down below, uh, of a number of different kinds of books that I don't think I've ever mentioned on this channel, but that I, I, I guess experience these things mostly through ebooks. Um, let's see here. The first couple are history, and the first one is an author that I've mentioned before. In fact, I've mentioned this book before on this channel, but you can't be expected to remember every one of the 5,700 books I've mentioned on this channel. The author's name is Harold Holzer. And he's a great uh, Lincoln scholar, a great scholar of Abraham Lincoln. He's a fantastic writer on Lincoln. Uh, always gets the essences and usually skips the pieties. And this, I found a, an e-copy of his, one of his best-selling books, uh, his best-known book, Lincoln and the Power of the Press, which is all about the horrible things that St. Abraham did to the American free press during the Civil War. Fascinating absolutely fascinating. Sheds a lot of highly detailed light on uh, an aspect of Lincoln that usually gets buried in one paragraph in a big biography. Uh, so that's a very much a recommend. So is the next one. Uh, it's by Anne de Courcy, who I have reviewed many, many times. And this one is The Viceroy's Daughters. And it's about the daughters of uh, the first, the Viceroy of India, uh, Lord Curzon. And, uh, and all the, the wacky and heartbreaking stuff that they got up to. And it's a uh, it reads like a dark mirror reflection of the Mitford sisters and, and, and is very captivating. This author really knows how to write this kind of history. Uh, not by any means, uh, you know, a searching analysis of, of the Raj, but very personality driven, very colorful. So if you like that kind of history, and I, I've, I do from time to time, I know a lot of people who read history like that from time to time, you're going to love this book if you haven't heard of it. Uh, then let's see here. We'll, let's do... Uh, uh, a romance. And a contemporary romance, too. Not a historical. This is a book by Ellie Kennedy called A Little Bit Hot. <laughs> and the reason it's called that, in addition to the fact that it's a heck of a title, is that this is kind of a an e-short story. An e-short. It's not a whole novel. Uh, and it's part of a series that she did where a whole troop of Navy SEALs, one after another, get married. One after another, they find the perfect woman, and this is a story of one of them who's been luckless. All of his, almost all of his squad mates have been paired off by now, uh, and they're desperate to get him paired off. So they, they <laughs> subject him to a blind date that is disastrous. But in the meantime, he realizes that he is falling for a neighbor, 
Uh, and it's it's a hoot. And the, the thing about these these romance shorts is that they don't tie everything up with a neat little bow at the end. So you have to you have to be prepared for that. Uh, and Ellie Kennedy is really good. I don't know if I have any of her books in printed form on my legendary romance bookcase, but I I, I wish I did. If I don't, um, then what can we do next? Uh, let's do YA. Uh, this is by Cherry Alsop. It's called Small Town Superhero. Very very effective book very emotionally resonant book about a, a new kid in town who encounters the very worst elements of his town and has to fight realizes that he has he has nowhere to go he has to fight for what he believes is right and he finds some allies as well uh it's it's very well done no condescension just lots of sharp angles uh and let's see here um Oh, right. Okay. We have, uh, this is, I don't think this is specifically YA, but it's definitely YA adjacent. It's by Heidi Cullinan, and it's called Carry the Ocean. Uh, and it's a, uh, it's a powerful little love story. It's a gay love story. Two boys who, one of whom is, uh, suffers occasionally from very bad bouts of clinical depression, and the other who is, is on the autism spectrum. And yet, love blooms between the two of them, and they end up being, and by the end of the book, very touchingly, they end up being each other's anchor in a way that could be all syrup and hallmark schmaltz, but it isn't. It isn't in this book, so I, I recommend it. It'll, it's a gut punch. Uh, then uh, let's do a couple more history. Uh, I have uh, The Long Defeat by Akiko Hashimoto. Uh, which is uh, yet another book on a well-trod subject, the, the long generational trauma of, of defeat in World War II on Japan, on all aspects of the government, the society, the interpersonal culture, all the uh, individual stories, just uh, really well done. I mean, there are many, many books on that subject, but this, this stood out. I, I was looking at it again, and I had, I confess, when I was dipping into it again on this old nook, and also trying to figure out the nightmare, the tech nightmare for me, we'll be getting it off that nook and onto something else. Uh, I will do it, though. There are, uh, I've been getting tons of emails from the rest of you. It turns out that is probably easy to do. It takes a little time. It's a little tedious, but it's not impossible. Uh, it's yet another uh, positive in the whole idea of owning ebooks is that you can move them all around. And the chances that the publisher is going to want to remove this book from any of my devices is slim to none, almost impossible. Uh, so I, that's that's I'm, that flexibility it, with with conversion sites like like Calibre are really helping a lot. Uh, but this is when I was dipping into it. I remember when I, I was reading a bit of it on the couch in the other room, and one of my first thoughts was very unworthy. It was very pre twenty first century. I was reading it. And I was thinking, boy, I wish I had a copy of this. I do have a copy of this. That's the whole point. I have a copy of it. It's not going anywhere. I can annotate the heck out of it. True, I can't give it to anybody, but who would I give this to, honestly? And it doesn't take up any space <laughs> at all. There, no mice can get at it. It's, it, it. It exists in a quantum superposition so that even if the device I'm reading it on were destroyed, I can still access it on some other device. Which is not true with printed books, as I know, as I have learned two times in my life, once through fire and once through flood. If you lose those copies, it's not like that library exists somewhere else and I can just re-access it. No, not at all. So I do have a copy. I just need to remember that. That's all. Uh, then the other uh, work of history is by Julian Richards. It's it going to be uh, predictable to a lot of you because it's a sweet tooth of mine when it comes to history. It's a book called Viking Age England. And it's really good. It's it's really, really good. Again, my first thought was, ooh, I wish I had that for my Viking history shelf, but I do have the book, and I can make a Viking history shelf on this e-reader, on this in, in this program, in this app. I could easily do that if I wanted to. That will be one of the next steps. In June, I plan to master all of this as much as I can, and one of the things I will do would be to organize these libraries, make sure that I'm not just scrolling up a gigantic page. I will put things on different shelves in different parts of libraries so that I can go right to them. Uh, but this is this is terrific. It's because it's not just about violence. It's not just about uh, conquest and dead bodies and buried with axes in graves. It's also about cultural conquest. It's about the fact that the Vikings, a lot of Vikings, came and stayed in England. 
they, they, they weren't just interested in raiding monasteries, bless their black little hearts. They were also interested in agriculture, in, in putting down roots, in, in staying and being husbandrymen in a, in a more temperate and much more yielding climate than their home. Uh, and that, all of that is just fascinating, just fascinating. Uh, and I don't think I've ever talked about this with, with I think these are all from before book two. Uh, and there are plenty more. I could do this again easily. Uh, the next one is a novel by Martin Booth. It's called Hiroshima Joe. A very moving, very uh, very dark novel about a man who was present as a prisoner of war when the Hiroshima bomb bo dropped and it, it shattered him, of course, as you would expect it would. And he is now a derelict, just scrounging around on the outskirts of town, on the outskirts of society, a, a bar, a rummy, and that sort of thing largely scorned by everyone around him and it, this story ends up being very moving about just one tiny little sliver story about the people all the countless people who are shattered by by accident by war and that it just uh i remember it really really uh, did a lot for me when i read it and i need to read it again and i have it i have it now so i i can just read it again uh then uh, another work of history ian baruma uh, wrote a book called Year Zero, which is all about 1945. It's all about the year 1945, which he rather charmingly views as uh, sort of restarting the clock. The war ends. The thing that has preoccupied the, the whole world for almost 10 years, or almost 40 years, no matter, depending on how you reckon it, is now over. It's now over. And history is now starting again. Now that that, that, that is all over, history is starting again, hence the title. And what does that mean? And how, how is that reflected in all the countries that you look at and all the different parts of society? Very, very good stuff. Uh, uh, okay, then we'll do a historical novel. <laughs> I will do a historical novel because I feel like I should defend historical fiction after the, the belaboring about the head and neck that Jason Harrigan gave it just the other day where, uh, he, where he, he goes on at length about how history, historical fiction doesn't please him because he reads, fi he reads history. <laughs> and I... I read history too, but I wanted to stick up for historical fiction, which sometimes maybe it's just that he's not reading the right history. Although, if you, if it's not if Hilary Mantel isn't doing it for you, then I don't think you're probably going to have it done. Uh, but this is Rustication by Charles Palliser, whom some of you will know for his great big novel, The Quincunx. Uh, he is a brainy novelist, uh, brainy and uh, stylistically daring in some ways. And uh, this is the, the story uh, takes place in the middle of the 19th century when Wilson Shugart is sent down from college. He is rusticated, as the term used to be. I don't know that term is used anymore. Um, and he's a mess, of course. If any of you remember Wilson, he was he, he's a mess. And, and his rustication proves extremely eventful. <laughs> the, the character in the book is uh, quickly becomes a suspect in, in a horrible series of crimes. And it's all really dark and atmospheric, very well done. Uh, and then we can, let's see, we can end up here with, uh, let's do a little popular science, uh, by Lee Billings, Five Billion Years of Solitude, which is a, a, a really good book about the history of the search for intelligent life in the universe, or even just life in general, the search for any, anybody out there. Uh, again, a popular, well-trod ground. We've seen a few books in the last few years on that subject, but... This one is really good, and I think it predates my channel. I don't think I've ever had cause to mention it, because these things, I would not have gotten paperback releases for any of these. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I don't even know how many of them I might have reviewed. Uh, the, the, some of these may predate reviewing. I, I don't know one way or another. I'll have to look and see. Uh, as usual, if I remember, I will try to leave links to everything that I've reviewed, <laughs> along with the titles of the books. Sometimes I forget to do that. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought I would share that because when I make bookish discoveries like this nowadays, I immediately think of you. These discoveries are never made in isolation anymore. I, I immediately think, oh, well, I should tell, I, I should talk all about that. <laughs> you poor saps are stuck. You have to listen to these Grandpa Simpson uh, wanderings. But it's been fun. I have, I have breaking into the, the gigantic backlog of older reading apps and reading devices I have found lots of books <laughs> lots of them that I didn't remember at all I mean once I looked at them once I maybe dipped a toe in the first page then I remembered everything about them but I didn't remember how many ebooks I bought I, I didn't remember that at all so maybe I'll do this again but one way or another I'm gonna wrap this up but we have other things to talk about so I will be back thank you book two